Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk from a dealer for you. Maybe your life has just turned upside down because you've had a baby and you have lots of questions. Or you've heard that breastfeeding is good for babies and you just want to know more about it. I'm Katie and in each episode, I talk about the processes going on in a woman's body, about the composition of breast milk and its effects, as well as tackling those myths and facts. Amazing, fascinating, and all backed up by science. In this episode, can a newborn baby crawl? What happens when there is skin contact? Can you still breastfeed after breast surgery? And is breast milk always the same? Hello and welcome to episode two. The big moment, birth, and the first few hours. Let's start with the very first hour of your baby's life, the magic hour. Your first hour with your new baby is unlike anything you've known before. And it also offers you a unique opportunity to initiate breastfeeding. Because if your baby latches onto the breast in those first 60 minutes it will trigger a chain reaction in your body so you can start feeding and protecting your newborn. While you were pregnant, your breasts were ready and waiting to feed your baby. But the pregnancy hormone progesterone stopped the hormone prolactin from allowing milk production to really get underway. After your placenta, afterbirth, is delivered, your progesterone levels begin to drop. This drop takes a couple of days, which is why you don't have large volumes of milk instantly available on day one. During the first hours with your baby, you need the active trigger of him latching on and sucking rhythmically to begin switching on the cells in your breasts to initiate your milk supply. Skin-to-skin contact. The direct contact of your naked baby against your bare chest helps release another hormone, oxytocin, which also aids both the initiation of your milk production and the delivery of small amounts of colostrum, your early milk, to your baby. For the first hour after birth, the oxytocin levels of both you and your baby are startlingly high, and that window closes quickly. It seems as though oxytocin's role goes beyond releasing milk, Experts believe it may prime the brain for upcoming breastfeeding interaction. When skin to skin, you and your baby should feel calmer. Your baby will cry less and your pain threshold will increase. The levels of stress hormones will decrease for both of you too. There's lots more about oxytocin and colostrum later in this episode. If your birth hasn't gone to plan and you've had an emergency caesarean or some other unexpected intervention, it's still important to make the most of that first hour, with your baby latching on and having as much skin-to-skin contact with you as possible. If that's not practical, he could have skin-to-skin with your partner instead. If your baby's been taken to the neonatal intensive care unit the NICU, you can still reproduce the sensations that trigger your milk supply. Be the baby by doing everything he would. Stimulate your breasts and nipples with your hands, apply vacuum pressure to your breasts with a breast pump, and be sure to collect your colostrum to feed to your baby. Why this is especially important for premature babies, you will learn in the next episode. But let's assume that your baby is ready to be with you right after birth. Something amazing can happen right away. The breast crawl. Yes, that's right, your newborn can crawl. Something he won't be able to do again for at least six months. Or rather, he has an instinctive ability to etch his way across your body using his arms and legs to get to your nipple and latch on. Scientists believe he could be attracted by the smell of oils secreted from the Montgomery glands, the little bumps on your areola, the darker coloured skin around your nipple. It's thought babies have this amazing survival skill so they can feed as soon as possible after being born. And there is more than one reason for that. Did you know... 
colostrum has a laxative effect. Colostrum, your first milk, acts like a laxative, helping your baby to do his first poo, called meconium. Be prepared, meconium is black and sticky, as it's made of the things he ingested while in the womb, such as amniotic fluid and mucus. However, subsequent nappies should be much easier to deal with, as your baby's poos will turn green and then yellow over the next few days. And a bonus for you is they should smell sweeter than formula poos. From output to input. So your baby has reached the breast and here comes the reward, breast milk. The early milk your breasts produce is very different from that which your baby will need in as little as a week's time. Colostrum is a thick yellow liquid that is rich in nutrients and easy to digest. But it provides far more than food alone. In fact, some people think it's even more important for protecting your baby than for feeding him. It's packed with white blood cells called leukocytes that fight infection and activate your baby's natural defences. These actually account for 70% of the cells in your colostrum because your newborn needs lots of protection from life outside your body. And there are antibodies to protect against bacteria and viruses. One of these coats your baby's immature and permeable gut, which is susceptible to infection and disease. This reduces his risk of tummy upsets and diarrhoea, as well as stopping harmful substances entering his bloodstream. There are also growth factors and hormones that will help him grow and develop and minerals such as magnesium, which keeps bones strong, and the heart rhythm steady, and zinc, which helps develop your baby's brain and supports his immune system. So although it may not seem like much, the tiny amount of this protein-packed liquid gold your breasts are making is just what your newborn needs. Occasionally, newborns don't get enough breast milk to hydrate and nourish them. The best way to tell whether your baby is getting enough is to look at his nappies. A typical newborn does one wee for each day of his life, until about day three, when he should have about three wet nappies a day. From day five, he should have five or more wet, heavy nappies a day, along with at least two dirty nappies. Poos should change from meconium or green to loose and yellow by the end of day four at the latest. If your baby is not following this pattern, seek medical advice quickly. Don't be alarmed if your baby brings up milk-coloured vomit after a feed. This is to be expected. However, seek medical advice if the vomit has orange, red, green, brown or black in it, or he is projectile vomiting, has a high temperature blood in his poo, a sunken fontanelle, which is the soft spot on his head, or is not back to his birth weight by two weeks of age. Let's go back to colostrum. Colostrum contains trace elements of minerals such as zinc, which your baby needs to grow, develop his brain and support his immune system, and copper, needed for growth and to maintain many organs such as the heart and the brain. In one study, the level of zinc was around four times as concentrated in colostrum than in mature milk. Although scientists are not yet certain how or why this happens, it's another amazing example of how dynamic your breast milk is. It's always changing. To make all this possible, a complicated chain reaction takes place in your body so that you can nourish and protect your new baby. This process is just as amazing as pregnancy and birth and relies on the hormone oxytocin. Just the right moment to learn more about oxytocin, often dubbed the love hormone or cuddle chemical. Oxytocin is released in your brain and your baby's brain too, whenever you breastfeed, like this. 
your baby sucking stimulates the touch receptors around your nipple and areola. This contact sends impulses to your brain's pituitary gland, which releases oxytocin. Oxytocin then stimulates the cells surrounding the alveoli where the milk is stored. The stimulated alveoli cells contract and squeeze the milk out through the ducts towards the nipple, as well as arousing intense feelings of love, well-being and calm. Oxytocin has been shown to decrease sensitivity to pain, promote healing, reduce stress and lower blood pressure in both mums and infants. Once breastfeeding is established, your baby's brain will release oxytocin whenever he sees or smells you or hears your voice and so he will also feel its pleasant effects at these times. Oxytocin also plays a part in your recovery from the extraordinary feat of giving birth. If your newborn latches on early and often, it helps your uterus, womb, contract. This encourages the third stage of childbirth, expelling the placenta, and can then protect you from losing too much blood. Continuing to breastfeed over the following days means oxytocin can help your uterus shrink back to size. This amazing hormone also plays a vital role in helping you bond with your new baby. Mums who breastfeed have higher oxytocin levels than those who give their babies formula. And scientists have linked this with enhanced mothering behaviour, including more eye contact, caressing, affectionate language and faster responsiveness. Oxytocin also has antidepressant and anti-anxiety properties and it may protect against postnatal depression. One study found that mothers with higher levels of oxytocin had fewer symptoms of anxiety and depression. But mental health is far more complicated than a single hormone and when it comes to breastfeeding and postnatal depression, Setting clear goals and getting expert support as soon as it's needed is really important. Speaking of expert help, here comes another myth. Or is it a fact? Myth or fact? You can't breastfeed if you've had breast surgery. It's a myth. Many women can, but it depends on the type of surgery they've had. Silicon and saline implants are safe for breastfeeding and surgeons often use techniques that cause minimal damage to breast glands, nerves and milk ducts. If you've had breast reduction surgery, a breast injury or an operation for medical reasons, your ability to breastfeed will depend on the amount of breast tissue that was removed or damaged. It's certainly worth trying. However, there's a chance your milk supply could be reduced, so keep a close eye on your baby's weight gain. You could also be more prone to engorgement and mastitis. If you have any concerns, speak to your doctor, lactation consultant or breastfeeding specialist. We now come to the end of this episode. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for being with us and one more thing to take away just for you. A little reminder. Starting your baby off with colostrum provides him with something irreplaceable, even if you only breastfeed right at the beginning. In the next episode, you'll find out why your colostrum is even more important when your baby is premature. This was Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk. From Medela, for you. The references to the studies used for this podcast can be found at medela.com forward slash ebook.